Here we are with head coach D'Amico Ryan's coach. Great to see you. Big week with the Colts coming in. I know we have to review what happened against the Packers. And how do you balance what went wrong in the game and what went right also? Because there were some good things you want to take with you, but you got to correct a lot of things as well. Man, great to be with you guys again. It was yeah. what you said, Mark. That's that's what it was. Like every game for me is a learning opportunity. It's a teaching opportunity as we go back and review the game. Man, they're, like you said, there were a ton of positive things, a ton of big plays made. I, offense, defense, special teams that I never lose sight of. So I want our guys to see the impact plays that were made. Our special teams played outstanding, right? Damian was able to get an explosive return. Tommy punted the ball really well. I mean, we forced a, a turnover on special teams, and we had a couple punts where we backed them up. Man, Kaimi making all of his kicks. Like, so mm -hmm. they played outstanding for us. They they created momentum for our team. And defensively, guys were able to get two two takeaways, get a couple sacks. Offensively, when we we ran the ball for really well, right? Ran the ball really well. Uh, and then when we needed a drive to go down and get points, we got points at the end to give us a chance, right, to close the game out. So a lot of great things that happened. It didn't end the way we wanted it to end, but we learned from that. And I hope our guys take from the game is, man, we were in position, right? And right. moving forward, like we're in position again, hopefully you understand, remember that moment in Green Bay where we didn't close it out and the things you need to change and do different to put yourself in position to make plays. Because through the first five games, Henry and Aziz had played every play linebacker. Yeah. Now they're not there. You go in there and it's it's just different. It's, it's Neville and it's Jake. How did that go just communication-wise? It felt like Neville, there was no drop-off. There was no change. Those guys went out and made plays. What did you think of the way those two linebackers played yesterday? Yeah, Neville was a veteran linebacker, and he stepped right in. And like you said, there was no, no issues with communication. He communicated very well. He did his job very well. Uh, Neville and Jake, both guys had really good weeks of practice. and So that gave me confidence yeah. as a coach going into the game that – they were going to be in the right spots. They were going to make some plays. Was it all clean? No, but, right. man, for those guys to step in and play the most that they played in a, in a long time, like I'm, I'm very proud of the way the effort that they gave yeah. and even the playmaking that they made as yeah. well. Plus, you get two picks in the game. Neville has one. Kalen has the other. He has yeah. three on the season. And you had other opportunities as well. I see the safeties and the DBs coach practicing those tip <laughs> drills, whatever, yeah. just launching the ball back there, trying to help them catch it. But it's tough sometimes to get the ball located properly, yet you did make some plays. Yeah, you may play. I mean, as I showed it, guys, like when you see on the on Kalen's interception, like when the coverage is tight <laughs> and we're playing single high safety and the coverage is tight and Kalen is roaming the middle of the field, he can go up and make those plays. You just have to force the quarterback all right, to elevate the throw, and Kalen can go make any catch he needs to make. But it starts with the rush. It starts with the coverage that was tight on Neville's pick. It just goes back to what I harp on and what I truly believe in is out-executing your opponent. And on Neville's interception, you got to watch Jalen Petrie and his technique as a quarter flat depend, defender on number two, like he played with excellent technique, patience, and for him to get his eyes back on the quarterback and to tip the pass, it was outstanding play by him and caused Neville to get the interception. So it's just a reminder for our guys, just always, yeah. always, always truly believe in your technique and execute. If you execute well, that's when the big plays are made. It's not when you try to go and do something – out of the scheme or try to make a hero play, that's not when the big plays happen. Coach, we went to New England. We started off really well in the first quarter. Second quarter, we kind of got mired in some muck. This week, we go to Green Bay. First quarter, kind of get through it. But then the second quarter really just kind of took off. And in large part, of that was Joe and the run game. What was clicking in the run game up front? Why was it really working the way that it was? Uh, and Again, how good is it to have Joe back? <laughs> man, so great. It's so great to it's have awesome. Joe. Oh, man, he's such an impressive uh, player. It's just his play style, his demeanor, it jumps off the tape, man. Yeah. It's just when he touches the ball, you know something positive is going to happen. And it starts up front. Like, I know our O-line is getting a lot of slack for pass protection. Well, we ran the ball for, I think, over 140 yards, two touchdowns. That's because of the O-line and the way they blocked. When we got a hat on the hat and we were clean – schematically everybody's where they were supposed to be like there were a lot of creases for joe to run through and joe doesn't run the way he runs without the o-line the tight ends receivers everybody yep. 
blocking and dialed in on the details of their job. So that's how Joe was able to have a big day. And one of my favorite runs is the, I think it's maybe his first touchdown run. He got cased over, slicing yep. back behind the line of scrimmage, and the way he finishes on one yeah. of their DNs, mm-hmm. just a physical that was great. block, physical finish. Like that gets me fired up. And before that, the play before that, Tegan takes yep. care of a linebacker on that play. Your tight ends, those two in particular, seem to give you some good in the run game too. Yeah, tight ends, they, they've done a great job in the run game. And, mm-hmm. you know, that's where we have to keep leaning on those guys. They can keep getting better, keep finishing blocks, but they have the tools. They have what it takes yeah. to finish in the run game. We just have to stay yeah. after it, and we have to just get better in our protection yep. uh, schematically. We yes. So what are some of those things, Coach, that are bothering you in pass protection right now? Yeah, it starts with – I think overall it starts with communicating, right? Mm -hmm. Communicating. And when I say communicating, that's like everybody being on the same page with you have these calls, whether you're, you know, you're sliding to one side or you're manning the side, like know who you're blocking first and foremost. Like that's the one thing. Know who, where you're going, know who you're working with so you can be on the same page. So it starts there with our guys being on the same page and then just executing, right? Some of the stunts and games that we've seen, like we just have to be better at knowing how far we need to slide to a side or if we need to set back deeper in protection. So punching with two hands versus one hand is just some technical things, small Mm -hmm. things that can definitely be cleaned up. (laughs) So that's what I'm encouraged by. It's not like, oh, it's something revolutionary that we've never seen. It's like, no, man, we can clean this up. We just have to play with, proper technique every single time and then just just execute and finish the right way what was the relationship like with you and bobby and jeff halfley when he was in san francisco mm-hmm. yeah man he spent uh, a lot of time with jeff when i first got into coaching jeff was the uh, secondary coach out in uh san francisco so spent a lot of time him jeff was uh very me and bobby were qcs at the time we were both defensive qcs so jeff was a veteran coach been there a while and i learned a lot from jeff just on coverage, like the way he taught DBs, press coverage, really detailed coach, Mm -hmm. uh, really did a great job with those guys out there. And he had the opportunity to go to Boston College as a head coach. We were all fired up for him. Coach, I think one of the plays that stands out to me that goes to what you've been saying, and I would imagine maybe it's something you showed your team, but – it's it's just it's like one moment in time that late drive second and twelve where Joe runs that zone play and Cade comes across and kicks out Preston and if you get one down block maybe Joe cuts behind and it feels like and that's the run game that had been pretty successful yeah. but it's like one spot that really just man you clean that up and maybe Joe walks in the end zone you don't have to kick the field goal yeah for sure and that's that's the thing I show the guys yeah. like just to show you know how. Where how close we are right. to scoring on that play. A lot of people are giving a lot of criticism about the lat. Well, if we block it the right, right way and we are on one person, then we're Joe's cutting that ball back. He's right downhill off a of shack for a touchdown right. because that's that's how clean the yep. picture would have been and that's how close we are. So man, I'm I'm encouraged. Yeah. I'm fired up for the next opportunity because I I know the plays our guys can make yep. and I know course we clean up a few things but i'm i'm excited about where we're headed it's play calling if it works great if it doesn't work <laughs> wait a minute you know how that goes all right so the colts come in here and it wasn't that long ago you saw the colts on opening day richardson is back with them he was out for a while they're coming off a of victory and this is absolutely huge yeah man you couldn't say it any better all right huge game for his division opponent rival game uh we know they're coming in after us and we're I love that, (laughs) you know, you don't want to lose, but I love that our guys are a little ticked off going Mm -hmm. into this game. Like, Mm -hmm. man, you got, you know, this game for first place in the division in our house. Like, it means everything. So how we show up, what's our attention to detail? Like, we we can't come back in here next Monday and talk about, oh, if we would have. If we would, like, no, we have to get this done. Right. This is the most important game of our season right now. Coach, the second game – of a divi- you know, playing a team in your division. I think last year we played the Colts in week, what, two yeah, or something, and, and then played them in 18. 18 right? mm-hmm. And that's a completely different team. Now it's week one and week eight. It's a little closer. Can you take a lot out of the first game and try and carry that forward? I mean, you ran for a lot. It doesn't mean you're going to run for a lot again, but yeah. are there some things that you can see carry forward, or is it kind of the same thing, like different team after seven weeks? Yeah, there are definitely things I think you carry forward. Like, hopefully we can – still establish a run but when you 
they know us well. We know them well. So, of course, they'll try to, you know, put more resources towards stop, store stopping the run. They have to, right? And uh, for us, defensively, like, they threw the ball over our head a couple of times. So, they have yeah. to be looking at that again. Like, man, can we get those same plays again? If not, you have to try them, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, we have to be uh, ready to defend those plays. And, of course, there will always be wrinkles sure. off of what you've shown your opponent. You try to add some wrinkles to see if you can – you know, hit them another way to try to get some explosive plays. Yeah. Well, they hope to have Jonathan Taylor back, and you did a pretty okay. good job against him last time. And last year did a really good job against Derrick Henry. These are backs in the Texans division. I know Henry's gone now, right. but what's the difference between facing a guy like Derrick Henry and a Jonathan Taylor and maybe some of the other talented backs in the league? Yeah, the, the difference, I think, with, with Jonathan Taylor is guy, he can just – he can hit it anywhere. Like his mm. speed, he has that, that home run type speed. And Derrick Henry, with him – he was more of a one-cut guy, whereas mm-hmm. you made him top his feet and you had enough guys at the party. You need, it's going to take you at least three guys to get him down. <laughs> yeah. Big guy, but you can make him kind of stop and start, and you can really finish the play before it gets started with Jonathan Taylor, his contact balance, and he can just take a play front side, cut it all the way back backside, and he has the gas to hit the home run. So uh, we know we'll probably get him back this week, one of their best players, one of the best running backs in the league. Uh, no, he's – Probably be chomping at a bit because he didn't have a good outing versus us the first time. So I know Shane is going to want to run the ball. Whatever, if it's Jonathan Taylor or if it's Anthony Richardson, he wants to run the football. So that's going to be our first key to victory, stopping the run. Coach, I know the focus is on the Colts, but then there's another one with the Jets shortly thereafter. And I ask that because do you? how does that change, maybe not the preparation, but just – handling guys' bodies during practice and making sure that they can play on a Sunday and a Thursday and be at their best in both of those. Do you make any adjustments this week for that, or is that more a next-week adjustment yeah. for that short week? Yeah, for me, it's more of a next-week adjustment. Right now, this week, man, we're all in on the yeah. Colts. Like yeah. I, yeah. And we'll, we'll deal with Thursday. Thursday games, we'll talk about it. It's a little more just can't do much. It's just all about rest, recovery, get as much sleep as possible, Then we'll do a lot of walkthroughs for that game. But this week... Man, it's Pulled all up. in on the Colts. Let's go. So does the Joe Flacco video, I didn't say tape, I didn't say film, <laughs> does that video uh, help you prepare for this one? Do you look at it much? Because they're so different, Flacco and Anthony Richardson. Yeah, they are completely different guys mm-hmm. when it comes to the quarterback position. Uh, well, we have to look at that because that's, for me, I'm looking at Shane and the play call and just to see, okay, how did it change when Flacco was in versus Anthony just to find those differences. But we have to look at the film or – tape, video, whatever you want to call it. (laughs) We have to look at the video versus Flacco and just see, okay, are they going to try to do something? I know they got the ball to downs a lot more. Their slot receiver who is back, who we didn't see the first week. So we'll probably see more uses of him. Um, And so, well, you have to go back and watch that that video. Coach, what's Kalen giving you in the back end? We know he's got the interception, so you see the numbers. But does he – I mean, and he almost – I, don't, I mean, he came so close to the other one to Tucker <laughs> yeah. Craft, which, man, that was a fastball from love. But either way, what's he kind of allowing you to do as the play caller with him back there? Is he giving you kind of some di- – like, hey, you know what? Because we've got him back there, maybe against this look we can do something different because he's back there. He's got so much more range. How's he kind of helping that? Yeah, with Kalen back there and his just – his ball skills, it allows, I think, for our underneath defenders to understand they can play it more aggressive. Mm-hmm. And that's what I want to see our guys do, play even more aggressive, like underneath coverage to force the quarterback to have to put the ball in there and right. make a tight throw. And if he tries to make a tight throw and he elevates it any, like Kalen has that ability to make him pay. So it's a matter of not me per se, but just when we are playing tighter coverage, right. like be even more aggressive yeah. on the lower hip so the ball can be elevated. Yeah, I know you always want to hold the opponent to zero, but yes. on the defensive line, Coach, you got some good playmaking up there. You had no Mario, obviously, for the first of four games, but Tim Settle, yeah. another sack for him. The edge guys doing their thing. You get Danico's feet wet anyway, get him back into the lineup. How about the guys up front? Yeah, really pleased with the defensive line, and you say Settle. Settle yeah. has been, man, he's been growing each and each and every week. He's getting so much better and his effect on the game. Like he shows up, he does a really great job. It kind of goes unnoticed when Will and Daniel are getting sacks. Typically it's been settled 
in the middle pressing the pocket, right, not allowing mm. the quarterback to step up. And then when his opportunity comes, he gets a one-on-one, he has enough wiggle and what it takes to finish on the quarterback. So, man, very pleased with him, impressed with how much better he's gotten learning our, our scheme and really he's thriving in our scheme and allowing the guys around him to play better. Coach, getting Danico back, I don't know I don't know how many plays he ended up playing yesterday, yeah. but he, he kind of – played like we thought he'd play on the edge and then he'd step inside and rush kind of what do you see for him going forward it's the first time playing against his well former team one of his yeah. former teams <laughs> in the afc south the colts what are your thoughts on Danico? yeah man really happy to have him back as we know it, it takes time <laughs> to yeah. get back so Danico missed a lot of time not being here missed some training camp time as well it's just just goes to show for everybody you can't just yeah pop up and get right. back to where you right. left off in football you have to build it back up so it's just for us allowing him that time to build up and get back to Danico and his playmaking ability but pleased with the few snaps that he had he was he was close a couple times on the quarterback and he knows it's like man coach is it's fast out there. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so, yeah, you know, I think the more time he gets on task, you know, yeah. we'll see him show up and make yeah. plays for us. All right. We've talked about this from time to time, but I think this helps everybody listening who has people reporting to them who are bosses themselves. And you have these assistant coaches. <laughs> and I know you like to have a relationship with all the players, but you can't possibly coach every player individually. So you have to coach the coaches. How does that work? Coaching your coaches, managing the coaches, and letting them do their thing with the position groups that they coach. Yeah, that's a great question. It takes a lot of uh, a lot of trust, a lot of delegating, like knowing that you know I I try to do it all, but I can't. <laughs> like you you burn out, so it's just a lot of I give our coaches a lot of leeway, a lot of trust, in allowing them to coach their players up the right way. And if I see something that needs to be changed, I go to the coaches first, mm -hmm. right? And that's that's where that adage come coaching the coaches, like. And I coach the coaches hard to make sure they coach the players hard. Just so I, and I let guys know we're all in this together. We're all together. Like, I just want it done correctly. Yeah. Like, it's not a matter of me having all the answers or mm -hmm. knowing everything. I don't know everything. But, man, I just want to get it fixed. <laughs> Whatever yeah, we got to right. get fixed, let's get it fixed. And, you know, for me, when I remember back when I was a position coach, it was just always a position coach took pride in my group. Like, I wanted to make sure my group was the best in the NFL. Okay. And that's why I want our coaches, our position coaches, to feel the same. Like, do you want to be the best? You want your group to be the best in the league. You want to be the best position coach in the league. Always remind them, like, it's only 32 of these positions. Right. Whatever position you coach, you're, only, you're one of 32. So it's a privilege and an honor, but it's also an urgency to make sure your players are playing the right way. Coach, the um, you talked about it at your press conference about I'm on to the Colts. I'm on to the Colts already. I mean, that's the epitome of the 24 hour rule. But how long did it take you as a player or coach to really get in that mindset of that? You can really let that one go and then start going forward to the Colts. Yeah, it, it took a time. It took a long time for me because those losses hurt. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. It hurts, man. And what I what I learned and is sometimes when those losses and you let them linger into like the Thursday, Friday, now that affects the next game. Right. Right. And and that's what I don't want to happen. Right? right. And then I was telling you guys being in the league for a while now, I've seen people ride the wave of when you win, you're the best team. You're the yeah. hottest team. And oh, you're moving up the ranks <laughs> as the top. Like yeah. that means nothing. Right. Like and when you lose, oh my goodness, they stink. They're the worst team right. ever. And it and it's just that that roller coaster of week to week. Whether right. you win, you lose. Win, lose. Like you're the best, you're the worst. Best is there's never any. And so if you ride that wave, man, you go crazy. Yeah. You pull all my hair out, even though it's already <laughs> gone. But you cannot go crazy trying to ride that wave. So yeah. that's forced me of just to say, hey, man, just stay even keel, calm, 24 hour rule. Learn from it and move on to the yeah. next opponent. Well, we know you want that game day energy with your players. You want them to be enthusiastic. There were some spirited conversations that appeared between the Texans and the Packers. <laughs> what about that part of it? You want them to be intense and into it, but I, how do you draw the line there? How do you regulate that, Coach? Yeah, for me, I told our guys, is like you're wasting energy. Like, And I okay. don't like wasted energy Like when we're – we're chirping after the play or before the game, we're getting into it with the opponent. Like, 
how does that help you? <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, I want all of that energy that you have to chirp after a play. How about putting that into some more energy and effort to finish a block <laughs> right. or okay. to finish on a catch? Like, right. that's where yeah. I want the energy going. Like, it's, it's wasted energy. It has nothing to do with the game. Like, and it really pulls your focus away from your job. Yep. And that's why I don't like all the bickering and back and forth. Like, I want guys focused on us. And mm-hmm. there I felt like, versus the Packers, I did feel like we got a little too chirpy, a little too chatty, pushing after the plays, but we weren't doing what we needed to do within the play. Right. And that's where I have a problem. Coach, right. for the last time during regular season, two in a row on the road, those are behind us. How good yeah. is it to be coming back home for Sunday? Whew, man, great to be home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're excited excited to be home in front of our home crowd. I feel like it's been, it's been a long time. Yeah. So, man, we're excited to feel that energy from our crowd, and we need it. Like this game, big game this week, we need the energy just like when we've been on the road <laughs> and in you know, Minnesota and in Green Bay, their fans have affected the game by yeah. being loud on third down and causing – you know, communication issues for us. So, Houston, can we get some yep. loud noise yep. on third down to affect our opponent? Like, we need it more so than ever. We need it this week. Yep. All right, the Amogee Bank Ask Coach question of the week. It's Andre Johnson Day on Sunday. He gets his Hall of Fame ring. So, do you have a favorite Andre Johnson moment? I don't know if we've Ooh, asked you this. Do you man. have a personal fave? Because you played with him. So, Ooh, does anything stand so out many. to you? <laughs> <laughs> so many like moments. Washington, Washington, that game. Yeah, the Washington, definitely. Washington over to that game there for him mm-hmm. to close it out. Uh, of course, uh, Cortland Finnegan. <laughs> 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 that moment always, Even the coach says it. Yeah, mm-hmm. that one always sticks out. Sometimes you just got to let them know. But, yeah. uh, man, Dre is just so many special moments. Just, just sitting on the sideline and just watching him perform, like, game mm-hmm. after game when – no, no slight to any of my former teammates, but when Dre was the best person on the field, the best receiver, and everybody knew the ball was going to him, and Dre is like triple covered, <laughs> and we're still throwing the ball to him, and he still comes <laughs> down with the ball time and time again. It's just uh, one of the best players I've ever had the chance to uh, play with, and I'm man so happy for him and his Hall of Fame uh, status now. He's mm-hmm. definitely – like in, uh, he's definitely big time, right? And he deserves it, man. Just why? And another moment for Dre for me is, like, as a young player coming into the league, like watching how guys practice. Mm-hmm. Like for me, watching how Andre practiced, like he practiced so hard, and I hardly ever seen him drop a football in practice. Right. And that's one thing that stood out to me. Like he practiced that way, and it showed up on Sunday mm-hmm. that way. Uh, so it was. Uh, it was a pleasure of being his teammate, uh, being his friend, and just seeing the effect that he had on the team, on the community. When we weren't great as the Texans, Dre was always that bright spot for us. Outstanding, Coach. Right. Thanks a lot. Good luck this Thank week. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.